<laughs> How are you doing, Paul? Are you ready to start? I think so. I think that is just about right, isn't it? That's about right. That'll do. That looks amazing. That will kind yes. of do. Should, should, we, should we start with how hilarious your instructions were? Because, like, so, so for a start, I didn't know what half the things you wanted to, to <laughs> make me to get were. So I, I literally was stood in Superdrug Googling what's blush. Oh my God, so so, so that, that, that was how it started. I then discovered that there were two makeup companies, or, or one of which I think is owned by Superdrug. One called Bourgeois. Uh -huh. which obviously I was not going to not purchase one called Bourgeois. <laughs> and then I discovered there was one called Revolution. So I have yes. both a combination of, of these, which is, is like some sort of critique of trade unionism. That is so and, sweet. Oh and God. also your hilarious message, um, get some moisturiser, but I'm sure you have some or whatever you say. <laughs> I, like, I mean, no. So I mean, I, I've never put anything on my face other than soap. So oh I, my I have God. purchased moisturiser. So they are, which well, I assume is the same. Well done, you. Oh my god! I, I, I also this ignored is... your request for lip gloss and instead okay. purchased lipstick, which I recognise you said was optional. Yes. So, um, I, and I've now been told by we somebody will... that I actually cool. misplaced my. Was that your doorbell or mine? Yours, I think. I think okay. Um, no, I actually misplaced my gloss, which I'm very upset about. But it's fine because we will. We can do without. We can definitely do without. So it's fine. Uh, hello, Will. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for joining. So we are going to do a peachy blush look with fake freckles today. And we're also going to talk about unionizing and especially unionizing as creatives in the creative industry. So give an amazing and big welcome to Paul, who very, very nicely and not knowing what he was getting into said yes to this <laughs> how are you feeling paul about all of this um i mean i i think like um a, a, a mild terror um i mean there, there's there, there is a definite um there's there's, there's a set of, of 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 feelings about how um I, 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 sh I should be more dignified and i'm not sure that this is uh this 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 attempt is going to aid with that but the idea of some sort of uh, freckled peachy look um you know it's certainly making me think of some like um restoration dandy so i mean i, I, oh. I, I, I feel that's very much in that in that vibe so yeah well i mean it, it's more like updated and a lot more you know 2020 kind of summer girl vibe i mean I, I mean that's my vibe I, I i'm a 2020 summer girl there we go in november oh i chose well <laughs> Okay, so just to get started, um, do you, we're going to start with the brows. So do you have a brow pencil? I haven't yet taken anything out of a wrapper yet. So let me, let me try and work out which one. Is. So I have a brow, that, that's the one, isn't it? No, I have oh, brow gel. Yeah. FYI to everyone, um, Paul does not own any makeup and very, very kindly went to literally purchase everything. Have you checked that it's your hair color? Um, you told me to get one that was sort of roughly the same, I think, which I have done. Yeah. Um, let's see how. But I was just sort of stood there in Superdrug, obviously masked up, going like, um, does this make sense? Oh, gosh, there's two ends to it. Let me see. Yes. That? Okay, is that's that, great. Is, is, no, this is, that, is good because like... Have I bought the right thing? Yes. Actually, you've bought the sophisticated one, so that's good. Um, so you need like... Ideally, you would want a little brow gel with like a brush that looks like a mascara brush, but smaller. Oh, oh so brow gel. Yeah. Oh, but hang I on. Mean... No, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Going back to the hair color thing, because I yeah. didn't pay attention. Um, I purchased a, the brow. The brow gel is a different affair, which is yes. black, mm -hmm. I think. And then I have another one, which is different for the freckled look. Yes. Because that's, it's... that's that's great. That's great. Hi, Ollie. <laughs> um, so this is how it's going to go. I'm just going to show you, and then we will start the interview, I guess. The chat, the the Sunday roast conversation. That's yeah. what we could call it. <laughs> I told you before, I'm a little worried I'm clashing with Elaine Page, and so I'll be taking away her viewing figures, <laughs> or her listening figures. Oh, right poor Elaine Page. She'll get over it. She'll survive. Is this this rise? 
Yes. Okay. Right. That's, okay. That's very light, though, compared to your it's brow color. It's so a bit. Should I try the other one instead? Yes, try the other one. Darker. Okay. Um... <laughs> brow styler. All right. Okay, so fine. this is how you're going to do the brows. The brows, very natural brows for this look. You don't need anything more than like a brow pencil, or if you have brow gel, that's even better. But yeah, for anyone out there who wants nice brows. So um, just apply, basically just take the brush and then very very lightly apply it and then press a little bit on your eyebrows right see what i'm okay. doing <laughs> um, <laughs> and now you're gonna have to do this and talk about unions how fun well yeah I'd, do i come on so how does it doesn't seem to be do I have to push it or something? What? How do I make it work? Well, it... So, so there's, is there any product on it? There's, Where does the there... product come from? What, probably the other side. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, I see. Right. <laughs> so, so hang on. Right. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've twiddled this. I will talk yeah. about those units. Basically. So I twiddle that end. That's the product that's come out. So, so basically, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I put that on and then I. So yours will be like in two times. First you apply, like you brush the, the eyebrows out and then you fill them in, basically, if that makes sense. All right, so brush it first. Yeah, you brush them first. Da, da, da. Oh, you're, you're much more careful than me, so it's a little bit trying to be more delicate. Oh, <laughs> very good, right? Putting makeup on is like an art. It's like your face is a canvas and you're gonna go really slowly and like really into detail with everything. <laughs> so yeah, Paul. You are the general secretary of F2, which is the actors union. But you told me in our chat that you weren't actually an actor, which I found really shocking. You're just, uh, I mean, you are kind of an actor. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, let's just, uh, what is art and who are performers is a slightly different question. Oh, bugger, I've just broken something. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I no, I'm, I've, I, I mean, I, I, should, I should say as well, like we, um, Quite rightly, a lot of our members want us to emphasise that it's not just actors, it's sort of actors, perf performers, directors, designers, choreographers, variety artists, audio artists, and so on. There's a full gamut. Yes. Um, I'm conscious I may well be doing a, a sort of subconscious tribute to our clown members today. But, um... <laughs> so you want to go a little bit, a little bit less um, extreme <laughs> with the brows? Just a little bit lighter. You don't have to fill them in completely. I can hear my better half laughing. Should I, should I do this again? Does that help? Does that help? I think that helps. Oh, look. They have got, They have changed colour. I look a bit like Dennis Healy. Oh, I mean, my God. Um, I think you really underestimated the scale of the challenge you've taken on. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm not an actor. And as a consequence, I've never had anybody put makeup on me, let alone put makeup on myself. Um yeah, is that sort of vaguely there? That I actually mean, looks pretty good. I mean, on one eyebrow. Probably. On that one? That that one's definitely the better, isn't it? No, I, I was going to say the other one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, fine. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Fine, 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 fine. It's okay. Don't worry. You're doing great for, for a first I'm time. I'm going to Yeah, just, just, um, uh, yeah fine. Yeah, definitely Dennis Healy style look yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, very good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not an actor. I'm a professional trades union bureaucrat. So where did you start? Like, what was your, what was like, baby Paul doing? You know, bureaucracy ba wise. Baby, or, like, baby bureaucrat. Yeah. Um, I what well, so before I worked at X Ray, I worked for the Steelworkers Union. Mm -hmm. Um, and before that, I worked in the United States for a bit um, oh. as a speechwriter. Mm -hmm. um, for, the Democratic for... Party. Okay, right. Which I found to be a, a, a wholly unsatisfactory uh, job. Why is that? Um, I think you realise how much in politics you're just covering for other people. And the sort of capacity, certainly, not, not being an, an elected politician necessarily, but I think working behind the scenes of it, you, you sort of fundamentally... You know, I mean... In, you 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 you're not actually affecting any sort of meaningful change mm -hmm. um 
and I applied for a job at the Steelworkers Union that was not the job that was advertised, really. Um, in fact, there was a particular moment where I, I was, um, I worked in New Jersey in the United States, and I was offered the chance to um, have a transfer when the, the job, the, the election I was working on ended, to go and work in Sacramento. And I, I sort of said, no, no, I'm not really that interested. Um, and I went back and worked for, um, but, but I, I, I remember very distinctly looking over a slag heap in Grimethorpe and thinking to myself, I could be in Sacramento now. Maybe I've made the wrong decision. Um, but that was my sort of first, yeah, America Steelworkers Union then came to work. That's, that's pretty big, though. I mean, you, you kind of like traveled across different unions. So you weren't just in like the creative industry, but you kind of have a wider view of, of unions. Um, let's move on to the eyes so okay. do you have your concealer um i don't think i do no i don't think i do have it what does it look like i mean all concealers look different but it's kind of like a sort of oh texture like set. oh it's no i don't think i do cover up uh, okay well that's fine i mean you don't you don't necessarily need it it's just like you would use it as a primer on your eyelids to make the color pop a bit more, but that's it. Oh dear, I'm sorry. I, I think you may have said it was optional and I went like, ah, I'm fine then. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So I'm gonna apply sorry. it on my eyelids. Um, and then what made you, did anything in particular wanna make you go to equity? Um, I was being made redundant from the Steelworkers Union, which was the, the principal motivating factor, it has to be said, um, for me to look for other jobs. Um, I'm being slightly facetious, um, <laughs> but but I th I think you know I didn't expect to no, and and nor did I particularly expect to go and work for a trades union in the arts or or whatever. I mean I have a great deal of respect for the work that members do and an interest, but it is a layman's interest. I wouldn't claim to be anybody who really understands um, art or has the capacity to be an artist um, mm -hmm. professionally. Um, but one of the things that that, that, that fascinates me in particular is that there is quite a high level of unionization in areas of the arts and that sort of collectivism the approach that is taken in an industry which from the outside is all about self the x factor yeah. you know what makes you the star all that sort of stuff um and so how do you end up with this very very joined up very collective approach with a group of working people who have very few statutory rights is the truth yeah and that i found was that was fascinating um and it didn't take very long to work out exactly why that's the case. I mean, if you watch like a West End chorus line, you know, in a group of people who have to be very much in tune with their colleagues, not just in a sort of like get along with them, but physically, yeah. if you're not, if you if you're not thinking the way that everybody else is thinking, it looks crap. The whole nature of the work um, uh, collapses. So um, yeah, it's a kind of it's a it's a sort of um, yeah, it, it was a, a, yeah, and I, th I think that's a really interesting thing to talk about as, as trades unionists, the way in which the work itself for our members as artists influences their perception of what the collective is. And that's kind of an underused thing, or I think historically it's been an underused thing, because our members do get it. Um, anyway, that was a bit yeah. of a rambling. Yeah. No, it's fine, it's fine. We just got a comment from someone who says, I think Paul does himself a disservice. He was a tremendous Willy Wonka at Highbury Youth Theatre. Yeah, I, I, I must confess, I did used to go to a Sunday uh, afternoon drama group uh, with a variety of I wonder who that was who commented. How do I see that? Mind of um, Mr. Callum. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Callum, who I think is now working as a professional artiste himself. Um, <laughs> artiste. But anyway, clearly I was nowhere near as good as, um, as, uh, as, as, as Callum himself. But so, yeah, no, my, 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 my Willy Wonka was indeed critically acclaimed as was my King Herod from the year nine Bishop Walsh school production. My Abanaza, um, when I was 13, was highly acclaimed uh, from a school's tour. Um, so I did try, try and decided that it was definitely not something <laughs> that the public, you know, deserves to have inflicted on them. Okay. Blush? Blush. Yeah, this was the thing I didn't understand what it was. So, and I had a big anxiety <laughs> about whether blusher was the same as blush. But it's bourgeois. <laughs> I it's feel bourgeois. like it is. Although I'm I'm a tiny bit worried that your blush is a bit orange and not peach, but hey. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Okay. okay. Yes, the knitwear action is real. Um, 
we so okay so this is what's great about this look is that you can kind of you only need one blush you don't need like a million other eyeshadows and stuff although i will use some more um and then you just take the blush very now hang on you, you instructed me to get two different brushes oh which yes. one do i use so the small one this the small one for the eyes yeah Fine. Oh my god, you got the blushes. Oh. I did. <laughs> oh. That is great. <laughs> god, god. Just take uh, the blush. And then... Rest and pack it open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great prep there. I presume it's not particularly hygienic to give all this stuff to somebody after I've used it. Although maybe this is the beginning of an awakening. Maybe I should wear makeup. You face. should. Oh my god, no, definitely keep it, you know. Or oh, like oh, one end of it's really sticky. What's all that about? Oh no, it's not. That's just the glue. Oh, it's stuck to the packet. Okay, fine. Got it. <laughs> okay. Yes, the brush. Take the brush, you kind of dip it into the blush. And then to remove excess. Dip it. What do you mean? Because it's hard. Have I got the right thing? Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. You, it, so, it's literally just called dipping. Yeah. So you just oh, okay. like... Boop, 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 boop. Oh, poop, poop, poop. Yep. Right. <laughs> and then tap it against the corner just to remove the excess. Great. And then you're going to brush it onto the entirety of your eyelid and like a little bit higher as well. Just really, really light motions because we're going to get <laughs> this is... you look so you look so scared i feel so sorry for making you do this <laughs> oh my god well i i like you know I've, so we're I've gonna start... go progressively so you start off like on the eyelid itself and oh, then get a little bit higher see like the sweeping motions i'm doing yeah no the thing i found about equity because i joined i like became professional actor ish um a year ago and then i was like oh my god i need to join equity i mean you know i've always been in all the unions all the unions um ever but i i just had like it, it was so strange because everyone is part of equity or everyone that i know is part of equity right like they're etc they're, they're, they're part of the union they know what it's like and they and they read the newspaper and yet our rights are like eroded every single day almost <laughs> do you know what i mean like it's 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 insane that a group of people who are so unionized as you say with like such a high rate of unionization get fucked constantly in this industry like it's you know at the end of the day like whether someone wants to hire you or whether you are precarious in the industry um your union can't do much about it because like the you know it's so big like the issues are so structural and, and big the, yeah yeah i mean this this, this <laughs> i don't know if you this a lot but there's this this i mean that's it's to some extent true i mean i think sometimes that people don't if you well, where do i start i mean there's there's a sort of set there's there's a central truth isn't it that every working person has the right to be an artist mm -hmm. and that every artist has the right to have a dignified working life yeah you know, that, 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 those are two things which um is what equity should be about yeah um and for most trades unions they only do the first bit yeah because what they do is they attempt to turn working people or not not turn but they allow working people to realize their potential as artists mm -hmm. so you improve people's pay you increase their stability you improve their time off and actually what it allows them to do is flourish as something more than just an economic unit. And the function of unions is to create artists. Yeah. With equity, we have that mission, but the mission is slightly inverted as well, because you have people for whom the concept of being an artist can be, in relationship to being a working person, quite oppressive. So you have people who will accept very poor terms or are right for exploitation because they feel that are and, and they're told repeatedly through drama school through training through their agents through the colleagues that they meet through their employers you know they're told if you do if you you should care about the art more like, this is like and, and actually it's kind of your fault if you get fucked over because you're not an artist enough and you, and you don't care about this enough and you're not yeah enough and worked enough and whatever and all of that you know just isn't so art can become in the context of a working person or what you're told art is um, can become quite oppressive for our members, which is unusual. That's not the same as 
how it is with, with others. Yeah, because uh, it, you know, I mean, the, you, you're kind of like told anyone who wants to become an artist is told, well, it's not a real job, or you know, you're going to have to work for free for a really long time. And then, and yeah, as you say, people are kind of like encouraged to be exploited because if they're not, then they're not a real artist, or you know, they're not dedicating themselves enough to their careers, and the the sort of the price that they pay now in like five to six years, they will then, you know, be millionaires and like be stars on the screen, et cetera. And there, there's no space for like being a working actor or being a working creative uh, that has like a decent pay and like working rights, but that's not necessarily like a star or, you know, a, a, a big fucking monster of the industry like there there's there seems to be no middle ground do you know what i mean like i I, I once met a member right and she was playing um i know actually i won't say who so, so it's not identified but like, but like they, they, they were playing a lead in a regional touring musical um but like on a non-union contract not a sort of massive thing and they were in their mid-60s and they, they, they spoke to me after meeting they were like oh um, I was just, well, I'm going to start, I'm, I'm retiring next year. I'm going to claim my pension. And, you know, I want to hear some details about it. What's the next one? And we worked it out and she had a pension. It wasn't massive, but, you know, I was just like, all oh, right, I'm going to retire on it. And, and it was quite fascinating, actually, and quite, I think, inspiring to have somebody who was there who was just like very matter of fact about the fact that, you know, they'd worked, they'd done their 66 years, I think she was 66, 67. She'd earned enough to have a pension. She had enough money coming in from royalties. She had enough money from her secondary payments. She was sorted. And actually she could go off and have a sort of dignified retirement and, you know, do, do, do whatever she wanted to do. Now that is something for people at the other end of the kind of generation spectrum is becoming less and less possible. Yeah. Um, which is the thing that actually, you know, the, the, the union we were always able to to do under the clothes shop. We had a, a really, you know, your, your capacity in particular to gain secondary payments and additional rights that underpinned your career, which was always very precarious in theatre or riot and, and, and so on. Um, but it's the collapse and actually the, 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 the modernisation of recorded media, multi-channel television, you know, uh, the, the collapse in, in commercials, um, income, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of attacks on the BBC and privatisation. Wait, and, there, there's like a that. lot of jargon in there. So we, we're going to have to oh. like put that through. Before we do that, um, so to, to kind of like give a little bit more, let's say texture or like, you know, form to the makeup, what you're going to do is you're going to take that blush again and then you're going to set it in just in the crease of the eyes. So if the crease of the eyes is a bit darker than the rest of the eye, then and then obviously blend it out right it's a bit darker you can kind of see that like this is darker this bit is darker than here oh hang on i not got anywhere near close enough at the bottom of it let's see it's oh. like right there like right when your eye ends and you just kind of do circular motions yeah so you can you see like here basically yeah there you go so yeah, what were we talking about? Oh yes, all the jargon. So you're talking about close job and then how things have changed. So my understanding was basically, um, this is this is the story that I have been told as like, you know, a, a, like from other people in the industry basically that have been here longer than me. Before, um, equity was a really strong union and, and people like, the life was precarious of an artist, but it was less precarious than now. Um, and people, you know, when they would do like commercials or that kind of stuff, they would, they would earn um, like a, a bundle of cash immediately. They would earn royalties for it. So like every time the advertisement went on TV, they would earn money so that they would have a, a more like stable form of income throughout the years. And then people in the advertisement industry, I'm assuming wanted to change that. So they did. And then equity was like, oh, we're going to put a ban on this. So like, so like actors who want to do this kind of stuff uh, will be, won't be allowed to do it or like, it's not really won't be allowed to do it, but like we will. So we, 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 had, we yeah. So, so the, the, yeah. the first real challenge of the, so, so we had the clothes shop, which, you know, if, if you're confused about what that is, it's, um, 
you, you were obliged to be a member of the union in order to work. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and it had lots of uh, the, 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 the upsides and downsides to having a closed shop. I mean, one of them is, you know, you don't volunteer to join. Um, you know, you're essentially compelled, and that doesn't necessarily make your relationship particularly um, active with the union. And it, it places a lot of power in the hands of the bureaucrats that um, union members engage to decide whether somebody should or shouldn't be in the union, should or shouldn't be working, should or shouldn't do something. So it's not, you know, it's not a utopia. And actually, wages in theatre for our members have never been that high. So there was, there was a really good report that was written by the TUC in uh, 1983. Which I would like, which is just hilarious, talking about the failure of Equities Closed Shop to put wages up in theatre. I mean, it is, you know, it's quite disparaging about it because it's just full of holes. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a perfect mechanism, but one thing it did do, particularly um, around commercials and stuff, is it gave us a particular level of strength because we could essentially compel people to not work for any terms below our agreement. But the first real test of the union after the closed shop ended, Margaret Thatcher ended it in. 1988, the year of my birth. Um, I'm the first general secretary who have not worked for the union whilst the closed shop was in operation at any point. Um, because uh, the the union um, attempted to basically behave as if it was still a closed shop and instruct its members to not work on TV commercials um, in the late 90s. Yeah, and you know a lot of people did do it. A lot of people did the did frankly the right thing. They did what the union told them and, and stood up. And a lot of people you'll still meet them today who lost a lot of money through that dispute because, as you say, the wages in or the or the, the fees in in commercials are so high that you're talking about people losing tens of thousands of pounds in the late 90s mm -hmm. and plus. Um, so they could buy a house. So they could buy houses. I mean, that is that is. You know, I mean, in fact, I know somebody. I know somebody very well who absolutely decided to not pay off their mortgage because the union was on strike and that was the right thing to do. Um, and there are some really sad stories because, of course, what happened is that didn't hold and that kind of collapsed. And so that that started a period of time which was the sort of a great period of union decline. Shall we just do equity. eyeliner? Yeah. Before it, yeah. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Before it, before the union declines, can we put eyeliner? On? <laughs> um, okay, eyeliner. so eyeliner. I'm um, I'm 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 gonna ask a dumb question, but have you ever put eyeliner on? What do you think? Hey, <laughs> no. What do you think? <laughs> okay, eyeliner is tricky. Um, last time I tried to have Sam do it, and he didn't. He didn't do it. I mean, I thought he looked quite good. I, I mean, this was my—I I wouldn't have agreed to have done it if Sam hadn't looked Aww. all right. <laughs> so. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. what? Let me show you how to do it. So you've got a sort of pencil eyeliner. I've got gel eyeliner, which is their their consistencies are a bit different, but you know, it's it's basically the same. So what you do? Okay. Oh shoot! I'm gonna have to do this on my computer. Um. So you put it as close to your lash line as like humanly possible and at first you just kind of like go a little bit you know you go up a bit at the end okay. yeah you do but first just do it like on your eyelid hang on let me just i might, I might do it with a slightly smaller <sighs> hang on. see so you don't go beyond the eye just yet and then when you're done with that go you on go just a little bit beyond the eye oh my god i don't have a proper mirror for this way for those just joining us now it is eyeliner time <laughs> as if you're wondering what the hell i'm doing <laughs> So basically, you want it to be like a little bit longer than your usual, I, I was going to say usual eyeliner, but I don't think you have a usual eyeliner. No. So it's it's okay if it looks a little bit like, you know, rough on the edges at first. But what you can do to help is like pull your eye a little bit with one hand and then apply it with, the, I feel like full on cat eyeliner is brave for someone who hasn't used makeup for years previously. <laughs> yes. Yes, Carrie, it is. But Paul can do it. Paul is very strong. Paul is... Are you, like, the youngest general secretary? Because you are, like, really young. 
Um, oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, I'm the youngest general secretary, not by much, it has to be said, by about like six or eight months. Um, well, so the, still counts. The, the general secretary of the Baker's Union was not impressed to find out that I um, <laughs> was a few months younger than her. <laughs> so, uh, oh no. But oh. yeah, I'm a. I am, and I'm the youngest equity general secretary by quite a. So pull your eye like oh, this. Right. Oh, oh, pull it like that. Oh, like oh I. Oh God, that does make it so much easier. I know, it? right? But yeah, so we're talking about um, industry um, union decline in the nineties. Yeah, so we we had this this yeah this period of massive stagnation, which kind of happened to us a little bit later than most of the unions, because mm -hmm. whereas most unions declined as their industries were decimated. Our industry continued to grow, but essentially what happened was our closed shop was decimated. So the whole, the union didn't respond to it in particularly um, a creative way. And we did for a long time, I'm realizing I'm maybe being a bit too dull and technical, but what they call credit card trades unionism, which is where you basically give people discounts and say, you know, join the union and we'll give you better car insurance and mm -hmm. whatever, and free will. So like, well, and, okay. So they, they kind of like commercialize the union, basically. Exactly. Like, like, like as if it's a club or, or whatever. And yeah. you know, that's valuable. Yeah. And for our members, for our variety members in particular, insurances and whatever, in order to work because they're genuine freelancers is a really important thing. But it, 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 it is shown pretty much in every context to not work. And it didn't work for us as much as it didn't work for lots of other unions. Um, and really hamming this up. Uh, and, uh, no, it's it's actually looking good. So what you want to do now is like kind of take the edges. See how your edges are a little bit rougher than like the the base. So go in really, really, really lightly and like touch up basically. So for the edges, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, what the top of it? Is yeah, it? the top of it, okay. so that it looks smoother basically. So like whenever there's a hole, just go really lightly and touch up. Yes, there you go. Yeah, but the eyeliner is a skill. There you go. Oh my God, it looks so much better already. See, it's full, it's dark, it's bold, and it looks clean. Hey, there we are. It's starting to, it's starting <laughs> to look slightly like somebody's grandmother, but I like it. <laughs> oh, bugger, I'm not. Right. Um, but yeah. Um... But yeah, so, so we, we went through this sort of like period of decline, which... Since about 2005, or just before 2005, we've reversed. Um, and this is one thing that actually there's a lot of like being down about equity or what the union can do or about, you know, where things have gone. But to, to, to put it in context, you know, uh, union density in the private sector in this country is about 10 percent. Union density on the West End was 75 percent on the 16th of March and is 85 percent now. What do you mean on the West End? Like, as in... Like in theater or on the yeah. West End specifically, because most yeah, so, people so, don't don't work on the West End. Like most no, actors, but, just. But if if you sort of take so if you take subsidized theater as a whole, mm -hmm. it's about eighty percent membership consistently. Um, if you take independent theater, if you like, sort of partially subsidized, all right kind of way, like TIE YPT type stuff, yeah. memberships um, between sixty and seventy percent. So it's still quite high, like across board for all it, creative even if you look at a non-unionized fringe production where people are on a um a sort of um a, a, like a, a, a profit share or, or, mm -hmm. or something like that whether or not that's legitimate or legal and um, you're still talking between 40 and 50 percent union membership so it is like people get very down about how where equity membership is but it is high and it is high now compared to where it was before so when i started working at equity in 2011 our density in um, uh, independent theatre was 40%. It's now 60%. When I started work, uh, working at Equity, looking after commercial tours, it was um, we had about 46% membership. We're now at 76%. So actually, there is a story over time. And the story is also about what's happened to terms and conditions. So over the last 16 years in commercial theatre, um, wages have gone up by 74%. In subsidised theatre, they've gone up by 64%. Now, 74% of bog all is still pretty pretty low, and, and, I'm, and I'm no, nobody's trying to say that even the union rates are yet where they need to be, but the increase in density has corresponded to a dramatic increase 
in people's terms and conditions. The average pay rise in Britain over that period has been around 10 percent. So that is, you know, it is a huge gap. Um, that the union is filling. And that is the exciting yeah. story about equity that we don't really talk about in coherent enough way for people to realise. And, and, and I think also because you don't feel well off, you don't feel more secure, you don't feel less precarious. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, it's, it's for me, yeah, continue the Islander. And then we're going to move on to mascara. Um, I think for me, it's, it's kind of, it, it feels like there's a huge gap between regular working actors who, you know, I think it was like, I think there was a stat that was like 12% of actors get 85% of all the jobs. And I think it, it might be the same or well, a lot less disparate for other um, jobs in the creative industry. But a lot of it is like a concentration or monopolization of work um, by a section of the workers. And then a lot of other workers are like, ultimate freelance so you know they they very very often do not do not have work to like have rights in if that makes sense you know like they very often Quite. can't even have recourse yeah they can't have recourse to their union because their union isn't there to give them a job it's there to preserve their rights when they do have jobs um but yeah but i think that's just you know it's Yay, the line. Yes. Okay, so that's I'm going to go a little bit longer. Yeah, pull it a little bit longer. And then that looks so good. Look at you. Hey. It looks Look grand. <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to try and match it to the end of my eyebrow. That seems like a reasonable sort of. It is exactly what you have to do, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's plausible. It looks amazing. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mascara. Um, mascara is very simple. You kind of just apply it. I mean, go to the base of your lashes and then curl that. Which way mask. around do you put the brush? Is that a silly question? Um, you would kind of like put, the, so you would put this tip here oh, I see. Mm -hmm. at the end of your eye. So it kind of takes the shape of your your eye and your eye. But, um, your <laughs> that thing your lashes <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look oh so yeah like i mean oh sorry it's coming so out we... oh, fuck it. <laughs> that almost <laughs> um so we had this um we had this chat actually with sam um about unionizing and about like how the the creative industry is looking more and more like a gig economy and it seems like the type of unionization or the type of unions or like the type of ways in which people in gig economies organize is quite different from you know unions where people have stable jobs and they they're i mean people are concerned about different things right they're concerned about like finding stable work rather than or before job like you know higher salaries or um does it, you know, m m m most trade unions would say, you know, our function is to secure improved terms and conditions while you're at work. Yeah. Um, as is that, but it's also to secure um, improved access to those terms and conditions okay. to ensure that more people get access to them. And th there's, there's something, uh, that, just reflecting what you were saying before, like, there's one thing that is said about our industry that is really untrue and, and, and people should stop saying it because it's not a knowledge of their worth, really. They say, oh, um, there are there, there are too many actors. Oh, there aren't too many horrible. actors. There aren't enough jobs. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, Literally every single you know. I mean, the, the the thing that actors will listen to most of the time is like the the people who will hire them, right? Because they they kind of want to be like the one that they want to hire, and the people that hire them are going to be like, there are too many actors in the industry. There are too many of you, but that's not true. As you say, there's just not enough jobs, and there's not enough accessible work i think you know like work that is ugh, i don't even know how to describe it but you know th th there's more and more productions every day it seems but a lot of them are like underpaid i think yeah that's paid work that i was looking for <laughs> the term yeah, specifically yeah. um you know it's, and it, it, it and, and and it is going to be a debate i think you know we were talking i was talking to a colleague on friday and we're looking at the sort of post-coronavirus world, Ooh. those um, organiz those arts organisations with lower overheads, i.e. without a building, and who do not use union terms, and can basically just have lying dormant for a year, 
mm-hmm. their risk is pretty small over this period. And so that 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 position may well only just increase. You know, that is going to be an enormous challenge as we leave coronavirus. Is do we have an explosion in that area of work, which actually over the last ten years has declined really? in part because of an enormous effort by the union. And when I say declined, it doesn't mean that that that, that sort of the sector shrunk. It's that the terms have improved. And, and there is a definite, I mean, I took the union's first national minimum wage case for actors in 2012, 13. Um, and we've taken three since then, I think, um, most of which were positive inclusions. And that kind of settled the debate about whether actors and stage management, indeed, were covered by um, the National Minimum Wage Act, whether they were covered by um, entitlements to holiday pay. Yeah. Um, and it's about making sure that those kind of messages are not lost in this pandemic and are actually people, people leave it and think, well, hang on a bloody minute. I've just been through this miserable year. I want, I, I don't want to, I don't want things to go back to how they were. I want things to go to a new, to, 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 to a, a new fairer society, a new mm-hmm. fairer industry. Um, and I think we're in the best place possible for that to, to happen. Um, Boy, because that's... the story of the union is, you know, we've dealt with the gig economy for 90 years. And if you compare us to, you know, if, if, if you look at um, trying to organise on new frontiers for other unions, and you know, a really good example, not like you wouldn't think about it as the gig economy, but like McDonald's is a very good example, where, you know, McDonald's workers um, are franchised out. So they're very, it's highly, highly fractured. You, know, you can't just get an agreement with McDonald's, you have to have an agreement with every single shop. And there's variations between them and terms are different. And in some shops, your manager will be nice. In some shops, your manager will be awful and get moved around. And McDonald's can indeed shut them. That's what they do infamously in the United States, in particular to avoid unionization. They shut down a McDonald's on one side of the uh, road and they reopen, they build and open a new one on the other side if there's unionization going on. Like, it can be that extreme. But the way the equities behaved to deal with that is to create these, what we call sectoral agreements. So every single theatre on the West End uses the same agreement. Every single independently funded uh, theatre uses the same agreement. Um, Every single regional commercial tour uses the same agreement. All independent TV and film things use the same agreements. 96% of British drama on television is on a union agreement, and it's on the same agreement, mostly. So you can kind of see, like, we have created this structure, this exoskeleton, if you like, above the gig economy that protects people. Mm-hmm. And that is a unique message as to how we do that with four other unions. Uh, and there are new frontiers of it, you know, audiobooks in particular has to be our that is a boom that is boom time in terms of Well voiceover you know, in general, no? Like voiceover in general, games, yeah. all that sort yeah. of stuff. That's yeah. somewhere where that, that system doesn't exist. And we need to introduce it. Um but we've experienced of doing this. And if you're you know, if you're attempting to organise people in the gig economy, you know, you really want something easy to come to in terms of terms and conditions for your Uber driver and your I'm trying to, a Halo driver and whatever the other sort of, I, I haven't gone bust, haven't I? but like I, I'm trying, trying to think of different, um, you know, you, you want an industry framework and we've done that and we keep doing that. Um, and there is a real value in it. And it is that industry framework. Where we've got first. Oh my God. Sorry. Um... That's all right. Drop my brush. Shall we move on to the freckles? Yes, this is the bit I'm looking forward to. Oh my god, I broke my brush. <laughs> Shit. Okay. This isn't a disaster, I don't. It is not a disaster. It looks amazing. Um, oh okay, dear. so you've got you've got your brow gel. Don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've got your um, brown, like light brown brow gel. Right? Yes. Okay. So I like doing that. I feel like I'm on like QVC or something, I'm showing off <laughs> what I've got. Oh, yeah. So what you want to do now is you kind of want to apply some of it on your hand. My yeah, hand. This. Yeah. I just okay. don't want to open it the wrong way around because I almost had a disaster with the. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. So what is this? Show me your hand again. Just. Oh, like you just a lot. Literally, just apply it. Yeah. Um, do you have a brush on this one as well? Yes. Cool. So what you're going to do basically is dip, take your brush, dip it on your hand like so. And the brush has to be really tiny. So like it's literally like this big, right? Oh, well, like, like yours is like probably this. yeah, yours is probably even tinier. And literally just dot it 
on your face. And it doesn't have to be very precise, you know, where you go. And then kind of blur it a little bit with your hands before it dries. So really, really light, really light gestures. It really shouldn't be too big. Oh, mine is, mine is drying really quickly. And it'll just be around your nose where there's going to be a little bit more. Oh, hello. And then kind of dissipate the more you get across your cheeks. I mean, I'm relatively freckly as it is. So it's sort of... Yeah. Oh. So, okay, so what you want to do now is before it dries, kind of tap it with your finger. Yeah, no sweeping motions, just very gently tap, 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 tap. tap yeah, I'm cocked tap, up slightly there, I look like I'm scarred. <laughs> yeah, right, there we are, neck marvellous. <laughs> Right, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be really vain, and I'm going to try and remove that. With go for it. Go for it. it. If some, oh, if you fuck like up, a, then you always have like wipes or like water or something. Yeah, there you go. Looks better already. I mean, I'm I'm sure people watching are screaming, "Why wouldn't you wipe the whole thing off and stuff?" <laughs> and but that is you know, not true. Like... <laughs> no one is thinking that. And um. If you want to go a bit further, you can also, I mean, you don't have it now, but you can also just take eyeshadow just so that you have like different freckle textures. <laughs> see, and different freckle colors. Oh, I see, right. Is that the pencil thing? No, that's the. That's my brush. Oh, sorry, that's eyeshadow. It's just brown eyeshadow, eyeshadow. Okay. but you don't, yeah, you don't need it. I might do, um, it's a sort of, yeah, it's a curious smell, this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> it does. It always smells a bit weird. Um, and then, once you're done with that. Oh, hang on now. I... Hello. Uh, hello. I think, yeah. That looks good. Yeah, a little bit more on your nose. <laughs> Thanks, Kay. <laughs> oh, does that? Hey, mm, no, that's gone a bit wrong, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, really press like light, lightly, because it has to kind of blend in with your skin, right? I mean, mine is just—it's really, really light. So once you put them on, just dab it with your finger like this. You know, I've buggered that. I've got overconfident. I think. <laughs> And once you're done with that, you're going to go in with the same blush and your big brush. Right? Same brush and the big brush. Okay. And the big brush. And then you're going to literally dab it on the corner of your cheekbones here. Oh, right. Going upwards. Yeah. Going upwards. <laughs> Can you see the comments? I've, I've, I've managed to switch them on and uh, yes, uh, I thought I'm, I'm not going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay, so the way that I understood it, because I, you know, I'm not, um, I, I, I don't know like all the bureaucracy lingo or like the, you know, the unionizing lingo and I haven't been in the industry very long, but it, what you're saying is basically, um, before the industry was in decline and since you arrived no i'm kidding but since you know since <laughs> for Basically. a while so see so here um oh my god thanks claude thanks a bunch <laughs> so what you want to do is like blend it out to the side of your face the corner of your face rather than inside around the nose you want to do outside like this and just really blend it out so stop adding to it at some point and then sweeping motions. Yeah, big sweeping motions. Like, honestly, it doesn't have to be very precise at this point because we're just adding in color and you kind of want to blur it out so it's not that colorful. Also, I'm a bit worried that your brush is like, your blush, sorry, is really, really orange, but we will pretend that it's peach for Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely a fault with the product and not me. 
let's, let's no it's that. not you it's not you um and yeah so what you kind of wanted to do because the industry has become a lot more precarious and you know also like a lot more vast in terms of like <laughs> work and you know there's there's uh series there's film tv there's like web series there's the whole world of voiceover you know there's and and all the other jobs that accompany that and like film and theater and and production of any kind um you're going a little bit high there paul so what you want so if you if you think the the color is too strong literally just take your brush without any makeup on without any product on so kind okay. of wipe it off first, wipe it on your hands to remove the product. Yeah. And then just spend a good two minutes just blending. Just brushing it. Then. Yeah, just blending, blending, and outwards. So you see how the sweeping motions I do are kind of like towards my ears. Yeah. So it blends in with your skin and it looks like the natural blush of a 2020 summer girl. <sighs> that <laughs> you were channeling right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is definitely what I'm channeling. <laughs> definitely what I'm channeling. Um. <laughs> don't know what the dog's going to make of my face. I have to say. Oh, he's going to love it. I mean, he's he might not recognize you, actually. But I'll... Yeah. But anyway, oh my God, I keep on trying to make this sentence. It's just incredibly long. Um, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, industry is precarious. But what, you, what the union is trying to do now is basically come back with a vengeance and try to find ways to re-secure the rights that people have lost when the, uh, industry, well, when the industry restructured itself. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a degree of like where we need to expand our scope. Mm -hmm. But a degree of it, I think people can be sometimes very down because life as a professional performing artist, whether you be performer, stage manager, director, designer, whatever, is quite like... It is, it's quite harsh. Yeah. But when, when you take the macro view, if you like, and you step backwards, we are in a position which compared to, I mean, the, the, the union is 25% larger than it was 10 years ago. Our density is in some instances 50% higher or more. Um, we, you know, the, the you know, rates of pay have gone up by you know, 60, 70%, particularly in theatre, it has to be said. Um, the scope, I mean, we're the only union in the world, uh, performers union in the world, to have an agreement with Netflix. You know, we've done pretty well at re adapting to that, but it's all happened rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And people aren't seeing that. They're not feeling that reality yet um, on a very micro level. But on a macro level, things have changed and improved. Um, and actually, we've got some quite interesting lessons for other unions um, about what trades unions look like about what trades unionists look like. The average mm -hmm. age of an, equity, of an equity member is 28. Well. We are the youngest trade union. Um, and, you know, when you sit down on, uh, you know, and watch a soap, 60% of the people that you're watching on, on that screen are trade union members. You know, when you sit down, we're broadcasting into people's homes every night, the most unlikely trade unionists imaginable. And that is a lesson for Uber drivers sat at home, for nurses, for, you know, uh, people working in retail or, or, or hospitality or whatever. You know, this is like, oh, actually, we are joined together in a movement that includes these people whose lives would be really precarious and really shit if it wasn't for the union at all setting some sort of standard. So it, it is quite exciting. I, I, it is quite exciting. The coronavirus pandemic is having a massive you know, like, like it is an enormous existential crisis for the industry, consequently Everyone. for our members, consequently for the union. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's we're in a relatively good place to deal with it. I think. Oh, okay. I just put some highlighter on it. I completely forgot to tell you about it. Um, All right. So put 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 the brush down. Put the brush is down. Is that it? Yes. Why is there a pineapple? <laughs> I don't know, but I quite liked the pineapple. See, the pineapple I felt was going with a sort of restoration vibe, and mm -hmm. then the revolution thing I couldn't, I couldn't not. Of course so, not. No. It doesn't smell of pineapple, which was something I was slightly anxious about. But there we are. Um, it's a bit underwhelming, though. That they would. Just what br what brush do I use? That one again? No. So you can just you can just use your hands. I have like a special fan brush for it, but not that thinner one again. No. no, no, this one already has product on it anyway. So, so just, use my just hand. take it with your fingers. Yeah. Take it with your fingers. Bam, bam, bam. And then apply it on the very top of your cheekbones. 
see from here until about midway on your eyes. Yes. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> I, I do feel this is a very summer girl. It's just oh, started to rain, which I think is a comment on how much of a 2020 <laughs> summer girl it could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, it was really sunny when we started, and now it's like, I mean, I'm I'm in a totally different country to you, so you know we're not staring at the same weather, but um, yeah, it's not it's not sunny anymore. It's pretty sad. And then once, oh, okay, no, <laughs> uh, don't go under the eyes. So basically, the highlight. Oh, have I gone a bit too far? Well, it's it's just basically because that will look a bit weird under your eyes. See if the so highlighter is here. This bit here. In yeah. the corner. Yeah. So just remove that little corner. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. That's fine. Okay, very quickly. Uh, and then we have to leave because we've been here for an hour and I did not see time fly. Um, okay. Take your... So what color is your um, lipstick? It is peach, allegedly. Oh, nice. Uh... <laughs> Oh, that looks great. Okay. Do my I QVC don't, routine. I don't have a peach lipstick, so your look will actually look Oh my gosh. That's nice. nothing like the colour. That's not the same, is it? Oh, hang on. That's not the same, is Oh it? my god, what a scam. I have actually never seen this before. <gasps> okay. Well, so... you'll have, okay, well, we'll have to deal with that. That's fine. Okay, so, mm -mm, before we start, put your moisturiser on your lips, because it is very important to moisturise your lips before I should have moisturized actually... on your lips yeah just some lip balm that normally does the trick but I didn't ask you to get lip balm so you can have to put no, moisturizer I, I don't have any exactly yeah no I, I kind of because you don't have moisturizer I kind of stopped imagining what things you would have and just assume that you would have nothing <laughs> name and shame the brand for the lipstick oh um it is Super drug zone. <laughs> uh, uh, oh no, no! I tell a lie. No, it is it is bourgeois lipstick. Oh okay. Mm. Of course. That's disappointing. Okay, so the way that you're gonna apply the lipstick is like a little Korean um, K beauty trick that I really love to do on my lips, especially for like more natural looks and more like peachy toned kind of soft, you know, stuff. It's applying the lipstick. on the inside of your lips. See, so see how it doesn't really end when my lips end. It kind of ends at halfway oh, I see. on my lips. <laughs> Is it working? It doesn't look like it's working. I don't know. <laughs> oh god, it's working on my hand. Look at that. <laughs> that is actually a really great peachy colour though. So apply it a couple times and then take the outer edge of that line and then just dab it with your fingers. And what's really good about this is that it doesn't have to be precise because it's kind of blurred out of your lip. Oh I see. I feel like I have sort of unpleasantly large lips. And it... What? You can never have large enough lips. Is it... I feel like they're out of proportion with the rest of my face. I mean, this is the great downside of Zoom and such. It's like, if God had intended me to look at my own face this much, you wouldn't put my eyes where they are. <laughs> and like, this is sort of my worst nightmare. Oh my God, no, Paul. This is, no. You're not allowed to think about yourself like this on this channel. Only body posy. No, you have a gorgeous face. Stop it. I mean, I did do before I covered it in freckles. <laughs> <laughs> and gave see, a black eye. Not a drill says they aren't unpleasantly large. Didn't see that at all. Thanks very much. They're great. <laughs> you have a great face, Paul. <laughs> a great 